Hey y'all. Uh, so first off, I just wanted to say thank you for watching my video. Uh, I don't know where most of y'all came from, but I definitely appreciate you all showing so much love for my earlier race recon video. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just because it's a lot of people hungry for content about what's going on in the new update, but I hope all y'all got some good information out of it. And hopefully what I provide for you today will be even more useful for you going forward. But there were some corrections and omissions that I needed to address from the earlier video. With the ring just being added to the game, I figured I'd do most of this as a voiceover to make my life a little bit easier for the editing and putting it all together, and also include my first impressions of the Green Hell's return in the back half of this video. So if you're just here to see a mediocre driver take on the ring with a fastish car, you can skip to about here. But if you want to hear about what's going on in Forza and hear about the best options that are in Rivals and how to take on the open classes in the coming weeks, Keep listening and I might have some good stuff for you. One last thing, when we get into the actual like impressions of driving around uh, the Nürburgring, uh, I'll be experimenting a little bit with the format. This is my first time doing one of these like hot lap videos or lap impression videos. And I'd love your feedback on how the format works for you. So we'll play around a little bit with a, using both the replay and some picture in picture stuff and just let me know what you like best. I'll may also upload the full ultra wide version of this into a separate video and uh, link it in the back end, but we'll see how that goes because recording those gets really hard. But until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of the content or at least enjoy the lap and see you in the back end. Hello. So an addendum to the addendum. Uh, as you can tell by the fact that I'm in a different shirt, I am recording this uh, a later, uh, a few things. This isn't going to make it up in time to talk about uh, getting the date wrong <laughs> for the uh, Fortona 75. So Fortona 75 is like actually happening in like two hours. Y'all are probably going to see this after the Fortona 75 uh, because Forza is just the best. Uh, the game crashed after I recorded like my initial impressions and I wasn't able to get a replay out of uh, my like talking part about like my thoughts of the track when I was first driving it. Um, a few things that I noticed before like we, we go into it and you'll probably see it in there. Uh, you'll see some specular uh, aberrations that pop up uh, throughout the lap. Uh, that is probably DLSS artifacting. And like, I'm getting a lot of DL DLSS artifacting in the fencing going by. So look out for that. There also pops up in the trees and a few other spots throughout the lap. So, um, that's something I'm gonna have to like look out for in tuning my own settings and working through everything else. Um, and yeah, I think that's the big thing. So format of the video has changed slightly. So you're just going to have a replay of a lap that I did later. Um, and then uh, I'll include in the back end of the video my thoughts on uh, the Nurburgring as I experienced it on what turned out to be my actual like first lap or two before the game crashed out. So uh, thanks. I hope you enjoy. I have to finish getting ready for racing. <laughs> Racers, welcome back, and this week is evidently the week of trying a whole bunch of new stuff because the update came out the day after I released my video, as expected, and released uh, the planned content for the month. So, we'll be releasing an addendum to this week's Race Recon. First up, a correction. In the previous video, I mentioned that Average Fuller's Fortona 75 will be held on Saturday, February 24th. In actuality, it will be held this Saturday, February 17th. So if you're interested in participating, please follow the link below and go check out Average Fuller's video and register if spots are still available. We also briefly discussed the goings on with the Blown Piston Motorsports community. The morning after I uploaded my video, BP of Nick uploaded his own video giving an account of what happened during the Mini Cooper Cup that he hosted that Sunday. Due to a number of glitches in the game, he wasn't able to host an event to the quality that he was looking for and made those sentiments well known in an open letter to the Forza developers. As I discussed in the previous video, I have also experienced a number of glitches with the online private lobbies as hosted through the one hour of racing tournament. I can't say I experienced uh, similar networking issues to what Nick, Nick highlighted, but I, I think that those issues are very serious and should be passed on to the developers for f investigation of future fixes. At least one of the issues that Nick ran into 
saving a replay of the race seems to be addressed in update 5, but testing will be needed to be conducted in order to see if that will resolve those issues and if lobby stability is still an issue going forward. The issues I've identified, along with those that Nick and a number of other online racing communities have identified within the Forza Private Lobby system, show the general state of private communities in Forza currently, and certainly does exist as a major weak point of the game in maintaining a fan base. Hopefully future improvements will begin addressing this as we get past the core issues that hamper people's enjoyment of the game. The story that I missed until just this weekend is a YouTube channel by the name of Friend DA uploaded a video talking about the exhausting development behind Forza Motorsport. In the video, the creator discusses their time working as a terrain artist for Turn 10 Studios in the development of Forza Motorsport 8 to 2023, whatever we're calling this game now. They go into detail breaking down the issues that they have with the rule that Microsoft Studio has called the 18-6 rule regarding how contract employees can be used on certain Microsoft projects. This rule in essence is a limitation on what subcontractors can be hired to do instead of full-time Microsoft employees. Under the rule, subcontractors can only work for 18 months on a project before they have to be removed from the project for six months. In the world of breeder contracting, a lot of companies will have these sorts of rules to force themselves to have to hire people instead of continually casualizing their workforce. But where this rule tends to backfire is a lot of company management has discovered that they can still just casualize their workforce by continually burning through the available pool of workers because people are interested or passionate for these positions and still just bring them in on these 18 month or however long short term contracts and then still just have them rotate out. Issues in, with Forza Motorsport that this is causing shows a larger issue with inside of the American workforce of the general casualization of, of employees and an undervaluing of institutional knowledge and how that builds an actual community and esprit de corps inside of a workforce to actually bring a life to a product. Because you can't keep people in place long enough for modern AAA titles to be developed by rotating them out on these 18 month stints. Again, in spirit, the idea of the regulation is that you shouldn't be just churning through employees, you should be transitioning these people into full time employees for the company. But when they do that, they have the additional overhead of having to pay for healthcare, having to pay for benefits, having to pay for retirement. And these companies are just avoiding that. It's pure corporate greed. I'm, I'm going to avoid going down this path any deeper. I super recommend going to check out the Friend DA channel. Uh, their video is very insightful into just sort of the spirit that was inside of the development team at at Turn 10 Studios as the game was being developed and what's going on in Microsoft Studios. Um, also, just saying from outside of the game development industry, this is a problem in the larger labor force as a whole. So uh, I understand like this is the, the pile on Turn 10 uh, and I like generally like take a bit more of a positive bent when discussing things with Forza Motorsport and, and the game, but they're not angels. They're guilty of committing the same greedy corporate practices that are damaging the entirety of the game development industry and is damaging the entirety of the workforce in the United States. So uh, I hope we can kind of turn around from uh, this, I guess I feel a little ranty and uh, gloomy topic onto other things that we have going on in the community. Just uh, just swipe this to the side. <laughs> and moving on. And before moving on to the content of the update, in my rundown of motorsports events happening this week, I forgot to mention that this weekend is the 12 hours of Bathurst at Mount Panorama. <coughs> Another good track that might be a good idea to add to the game. <coughs> Sorry. I'm not sure how much of the race I'll be able to catch myself, but I know I'll definitely be watching. If you want to watch along as well, the Bathurst 12 hours is streamed on the 12 hours of Bathurst YouTube channel in its entirety. If you want to preview what's happening at the race this year, be sure to check out this video by Formula Jonah. Now, on to update 5.0. Update 5.0 delivered as scheduled this Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 9 p.m. UTC, and then was followed by the in-game weekly content reset, which occurred at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 a.m. UTC. And in career mode, the open tour takes us on a tour of German automotive manufacturers, with the tour levels ranging from D-Class up to A-Class. 
And in feature multiplayer, we begin the month off with Grand Prix Rivals, letting you step into F1 cars from the early 1990s. And from all looks of it, they're throwing us out there in X-Class cars. So may God have mercy on your soul and your safety rating. This month's featured career mode is the Ringer Tour. Also, as I predicted, taking us on a tour of legendary cars that have challenged the notorious German track. And for the first stop on the Ringer Tour, we start with the BMW M2, which will also be the spotlight car for this week. And continuing the open class multiplayer, this week's classes are Class S and Class D. In Class S, the Porsche 911 GT1 Strassenwerschen continues its reign of supremacy, but experimentation in the class by all the players has led it to a bit of erosion in its dominance. In the lower orders, we see the Jaguar XJR15 emerging as a viable competitor on the long straights of Le Mans, while the 2008 Dodge Viper's big V10 grunt proves valuable when time comes for high speed and high downforce. And in D-Class, we have an even greater erosion of the MX-5's overall supremacy, with more and more top rival spots being taken over by the 1974 Toyota Corolla and Acura Integra from 2001. And, as Garage 56 showed us this last year, the French countryside loves American muscle. Not only does the AMC Rebel still maintain its top spot on the chart, Le Mans is also being taken over by 1968 Mustangs. I typically like to include more on-track B-roll of the various cars and information on all the topics, but since the information I needed for this came out in a timely manner, and you all have shown, shown me so much love on my previous video, I wanted to give you more of what I typically produce for, for my content as well as provide corrections and updates for some information I provided in the initial video. So, if you're back from my earlier recon video and other uploads, I sincerely appreciate it, and I hope you consider subscribing for more of my content. If you're new, well, I hope you consider doing the same. So get out there and race safe and race smart. We're out. We're doing it in the Porsche 911 Strasse version. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to go full race car on the first time around. Um, so what we'll do is a run up. We'll do a full lap to refamiliarize ourselves. And then, uh, sorry. And then we'll attempt one or two flyers, depending on like what my energy is. Uh, it is way later than I wanted to be recording this, but we, we push forward. So uh, we're doing this in Rivals, so I'm not going to do any special tuning. I'm pretty sure this is mostly still just stock. Um, it runs well enough. Yeah, this is stock on street tires. Welcome to the Nürburgring. We're running the full cir circuit, which is the 24-hour layout. Um, Yeah, I gotta like refamiliarize myself with this. See, that's why you don't mess with the radio while you're in the supercar. Give me a second, I do need music for this because it's a long drive.
so it has been a very long time since I've actually driven the Nurburgring in any sort of anger. Uh, I have been out of motorsports proper for quite a while. So this is like the first time I'm coming back here since God knows how long. I think the first time I learned what the Nurburgring was or like drove it in a game, uh, I'm a longtime Xbox kid. So I played the Nurburgring in Project Goth. Was it Project Gotham Racing? I think it was either in Project Gotham or in Forza One. I do not remember which. Oh, it's a blind crest. Down into here. I do not know any of the names of these turns. So I am actually cautiously applying throttle because. Yes, I'm using the braking line, but I know this will and can sneak up on you very quickly. And while I'm not running any damage because this is rivals, I'd like to still try to get through as clean as possible. Make sure I break it down there. Keep it on the track as much as possible. But it actually hasn't been. It's been a long time since I've driven uh, the Nurburgring on a controller. Uh, the last time I actually drove it was on a three thousand dollars sim rig, uh, semi cube sim rig setup. Uh, the local micro center as uh, they want to do has like their uh, example racing rig set up and I was pricing out uh, future components for my own setup and they had basically this like super overkill semi cube setup oh man it was so nice uh, so it was like a 14 nanometer uh, wheel base um with a formula style wheel and they were running a 911 gt3 car in i racing uh on the nordschleife and i could not put down a whole lap that's the one other bad thing about the nurburgring if you guys get an itch midway through, especially if you're playing on controller, because you need both hands to like do all your operations. I'm going to be crinkling my nose because I got a nose itch so bad right now. Woo, a little bit of oversteer. Catch it with a dash of counter. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, that's the spot right there where I would fuck up that GT3 car because I would slap it into the wall and come back around and you've got wheel damage. All right, we're going to pause off. Oh, fuck, what the hell? I'm sorry that live lap. Oh. So a little too fast down through there. So it's going to be very fun because uh, what I've started doing to try to push my skills up more is racing on, ooh, ooh, racing on super realistic in the uh, career mode. So when I finally have to come through here, no rewinds, full damage. If I bin it, that's the end of the lap. Too fast, too fast. Need to be on the brakes, need to be on the brakes.
I think we're throwing it up here into the carousel. Ooh, missed it, missed it. Didn't get it down. So for some of you that like know me and know like the area I talk about I live in, I live in the, uh, what's referred to as the DMV area, uh, the DC, Maryland, Virginia sort of triangle. And I only bring this up because like uh, our popular uh, sort of grassroots local track is a spot called Summit Point. And Summit Point is at least like locally notable because they more or less have like a one for one profile of the carousel of the Nurburgring uh, on their track. Ooh, not, not enough to get in there. Missed that apex by a whole mile. So I did a quick glance uh, at the leaderboards uh, for the Nurburgring in S class, and not super surprised. The current, ooh, ooh, that's an off. Uh, the current leaderboard leader for S class is the 911 Strassen version, fully upgraded to um, S900. And uh, if you looked at our, well, the addendum that will be earlier in this video, uh, this car is sort of the most dominant car in the S-Class. So it'll be interesting to see if this remains true or if uh, people are ever to find uh, sort of another meta of how best to tackle the Nürburgring. Like, but like even just bone stock, this feels really, really nice coming through here. Yeah, I think the goal is uh, clean lap time on the next lap through. I at least want to put down one clean lap time before I go to bed tonight. Let her open up or across this straight. Take a moment to appreciate the surroundings. See the campground. Ooh, bounce off that curve. Ooh, way down in the first gear. Money shifted the 911 GT1. And we re-enter the GP circuit. And my current dirty is a 9. Just under 10 minutes. Let's do a little more work this time to try to keep it as clean as possible. I didn't have faith in the car saving itself there. And 
and transitioning off the GP circuit on to the toll road. I'm going to be a little more careful this time. I do want to try to do my best to keep it on the track. Going for a clean lap. A decently fast one, but a clean one. Yeah, the blind crest in first person are a little hard to deal with, but you live and you work through it. The Nürburgring is definitely one of those tracks where I'm like relying very heavily on uh, the braking line to give me a heads up of what's coming up because this is way too much for my three or four brain cells to try to keep track of and remember. Maybe I'll like get back into the territory. Ooh. where I can manage this type of thing, but as of right now, that is definitely not my ministry. But I've already picked up 10 seconds. Come on, come on, keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. Come on, come on, baby. Sorry I put you in the wrong gear. Lost about a second to that section. Come on, pull it back on, pull it back on. We're still clean so far. Sorry, I need to like stretch a little bit because like I'm focusing and I can feel my body getting. I do need to be relaxed, but I like need to like still be present enough. I don't feel like I really needed to break there. But I also like don't trust myself enough to like ah oh, now you can you can like not no lift that. Right hand uphill. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Not a great turn through the carousel, but We found our second back. Oh, 
Ooh, come on, come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Blind Crest. No! Oh, I was so close. Just a little... Like, that one was, like, such a small off. It was, like, a wandered off the track. Like, I think I wandered off the track on a straight. So, uh, another note to make while I'm doing this is how frame rates are looking. Uh, admittedly, I'm using about a half to a third of the. Ooh, 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 come on, a little more. Nah, that's a that's a legitimate off. Um, I'm seeing about low 50 FPS. Um, I need to really update my build information but currently i'm playing on a 59 oh yeah yeah i'm playing on a 5900 x uh and a 3090 ti now i'll have to like play it without recording streaming or any of the background stuff i have open running and then uh, be a better judge of what the performance is looking like. But... I don't remember what I was about to say. Sorry, I got like kind of hypnotized by... by the high-speed trees coming at me. All right, we're gonna try one more. All right, shake it off. We're gonna see if we can do one more. We're gonna see if we can get this one clean. Took 12 seconds out of that last lap. Sorry, I got confused by the, the format as the game loaded in and stuttered the frame rate. Oh, I remember what I was saying now. Yeah, I need to... I need to try the game clean while I'm not running my OBS setup. Uh, my OBS setup... OBS by itself is not uh, particularly heavy, but I run artificial green screening and a whole bunch of other stuff on my streaming setup. Oh, come on already. All right. So we're just going to go on and drop that there. Uh, we're so early. We're going to just do a skip lap there. Actually, no, we'll finish. We're going to call that there. Yeah, but I need to do a test of it without all of the stuff running to see like what po full performance is. But seeing mid 50s with the graphical setup that I'm running is pretty good. So thanks for checking out my hot laps. Um, yeah, I'll probably record an outro tomorrow when I'm like clear because it's again like 1 a.m. Yeah, it's 1.30. So I'll try again to get like a, a like a real clean one and then we'll go from there. So hope you enjoyed.